my history with the the enhanced interrogation program, um, which was effectively created by Jim Mitchell, who I just talked about it down in Florida. Uh, the my history with that is I was the first person to be waterboarded on national TV. Oh shit! It was like the assignment. It was when I was trying to pay for Harvard, and I was working at Al Gore's television network, Current TV, my first TV network, and I had this harebrained idea. Everybody was talking about waterboarding, and uh, it, it was a debate within the annals of national security. You saw people opining about is it. Is it torture? Is it not torture? That whole thing. John McCain went to war with the White House over this issue, right? And everybody's talking about it. Like, nobody knew what it was. So I was like, well, I know what it was, or I know what it you is. You guys have to get waterboarded, don't you, sometimes? I got waterboarded in, yeah. uh, in Sears School. Uh, yeah, my friend, my friend did that, too. He was escape. like, it's yeah. torture. <laughs> He's uh, a tough fucker. And he goes, to me, that was torture. You know, like, have I told you, like, my experience no. with it the first go around? No. Is, you know, they, they strapped me to that board. And you have this, like, backstory, cover story that you're supposed to kind of resist them extracting information. The whole school is designed to teach you to resist interrogation, yeah, right? You go, you go there, right? And then, so anyways, they strapped me down to that waterboard and they started you know, putting the hose in my mouth or whatever. And then they like... So explain that what it is. Yeah, so waterboarding is a, a torture... Uh, sorry, an interrogation... <laughs> uh, it's an like interrogation. Betrayed myself. It's an interrogation technique dating back to... Um, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella when they tried to rid the Spanish uh, the peninsula of Moors and Jews and other yeah. undesirables. So it, it comes out of Middle Ages. Right, right. right. So it's really an interrogation technique um, using water and simulating drowning that dates back hundreds of years. And yeah. history is fascinating. Right. Like the Nazis used it in World War II. Um, we we court-martialed Americans for using it in the Vietnam War. I want to watch this, by the way. We have this yeah. Is the video actually out? That's it. Is there? That's it. That's yeah, it. yeah. There's, there's me sucking water. So go on. So waterboarding uh, is this, is this crazy, uh, is this, this technique that's gone for a long time. Its most modern incarnation was probably done by the Khmer Rouge during the Cambodian genocide. Yeah. And in fact, I got the idea for the story when I was on that spring break assignment on landmines, and I was at Toll Slang, which is. A museum where the Khmer Rouge killed 20,000 Cambodians, and I saw a picture of waterboarding Damn. on the wall, and I Damn. saw this through line between all these nefarious regimes who had waterboarded, and then that we were waterboarding, wow. right? So I, I go, I pay this dude a thousand bucks to have myself waterboarded. He was a former SEER instructor, um, and we film it in the, this basement in Rhode Island because it was the closest place to, to Boston where I was living at the time, and, uh, and we put it up, and it goes... It goes like pretty, pretty crazy because nobody had ever seen it. Although funny little backstory, which I think you'll appreciate. I submitted it to the network and then it goes into, as you know, the video then goes into post production sure. or whatever. And like two weeks later, they call me and they're like, hey, Kaj, we, uh, we can't find the footage. <laughs> To go into edit of the waterboarding. And I was like, oh, I am not doing that shit again. <laughs> like, what do you mean you can't find the footage? Like, it turns out, to underscore that nobody really knew what it was, the guy who ingests the footage yeah. had seen the title waterboarding, and he thought it was a new extreme sport, like wakeboarding <laughs> or something, so he had filed it <laughs> under all the sports footage. Oh, fuck. Yeah, and it was missing for like two weeks, and the piece, my most famous piece that was the first time I was on national TV and all this stuff, almost didn't happen. Oh, my God. Because that Let's watch up. this. <laughs> Let's watch this. Oh, once it actually starts happening. Is that you? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, what is that? So part of the thing is they have to stuff a rag or a piece of parachute cloth. That's the most effective way in your mouth. That keeps you from spitting the water back up. As any, and, it, and, and it now you're that. having water pushed down your, your nose? Yeah, oh. so they, they're, they're holding my mouth so that I don't you know, miss the stream. It's more effective with a hose although or a bucket, although it's equally effective Dude, you're, with a you're, canteen. You can't breathe right now. Can't breathe, yeah. Um, and you'll see it starts to get, you can tolerate it for a little bit, but you'll see me start to shake after a while. Yeah, that's not good. Dude. Yeah. That's horrible. What we do to other human beings. Yeah, and I was, at the time, keenly aware of the fact that my buddies were still downrange and overseas, and they, in all likelihood, could be captured. And it's possible that the only thing that prevented them from being subjected to torture was the fact that we had always held this very strong moral line that 100%, we do not torture. 100%. 
It's so important. And so that's where I ultimately fell on the equation. Facing the moral high ground. So it was actually my professor, Alan Dershowitz. I interviewed him about oh, shit. it. shit. That was your professor? Yeah. Doing it the way we do it, without accountability and with deniability. Um, um, so this actually goes on for... I like Dershowitz. I think he's right. Dersh is a straight shooter. He, he's a complicated guy, but um, he's always been super willing to engage on these issues whenever, whenever he, he I've is. talked to him he's, about he's, it. He's like, if we have to do it, fine, but have transparency. That is what Fucking, he says. You he, know, it's like, literally if, if what you he'll... you really need yeah. torture, like if there's a guy who knows where a bomb is, then then uh, okay, but just, just who's doing it and just know that we're doing it. Yeah, his... His position is nuanced. He says at the the very least, if we're going to engage in this behavior, we have to be completely transparent about it. Yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, so th this really kicked off my long history. How long did that last? That looks awful. I couldn't 23 even watch it. minutes. Dude. Oh, you were waterboarded for 23 minutes. Yeah, because fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> How did you feel after that? Yeah, I, I was all right. Like, I, I recovered. Like, it wasn't as bad as the first time, but it was. It was bad. 23 fucking minutes. Yeah, well, I kind of messed it up. Like, honestly, like, I should have had a safe word or something, but I didn't have, like, a good plan going in because I wanted it to be as authentic and realistic as possible. You can never simulate actually being captured, obviously, oh, so but I wanted it to be close. Yeah. You know, so that people could at least have an informed debate about what we should be doing. Yeah. I mean, listen, that that's, that's very powerful looking at that. I, looking at that where you're tied up and you're, I mean, that shit is, to me, is it, torture or is it interrogation it's torture yeah it's torture yeah it's um even by i'm not a lawyer but like i had to dig deep enough into the legal infrastructure surrounding this yep. for for both this film for the architect film um and eventually for a scripted feature that was just made and inspired by all this stuff and um the legal definition of torture is essentially pain equivalent to death, which is obviously very subjective. Yeah. Um, but this is this is pretty damn close. You yeah. do think you're going to die. Yeah. I kind of feel like uh, the psychologists and the lawyers who are okaying this should be waterboarded so that they have an idea of what they're okaying. Not because they're bad people, but it might be nice to know a little bit about what you're what you're actually saying is legal. I'm, I'm just just to stay super honest all of us i mean yeah and i know mean, that's a gray area but it, look this these are these are tough questions yeah Can, is it even possible to conduct ethical warfare that's a real question my mom would Dude, say no that's a great question right my mom would say no she doesn't believe in it she doesn't believe in violence of any kind she don't she doesn't think it's possible so here i am see i do me too like, i mean that's, fascism was stopped by I mean, six million Jews were slaughtered, and what stopped those guys was violence, was overwhelming violence. What essentially eradicated slavery in our country, and actually the world, in many cases, was violence, was a war. Um, so we can go on and on about about that. And, uh, you know, I think communism, in its in the way in its forms, was a very evil thing, and I think. Uh, a market economy is better for people, and I think a lot of times that war was won with guns. I hate to say that. No, the, first of all, I'm going to recruit you to the next family Thanksgiving because, like, I need more allies in this fight. Yeah. But this is what I, I tell my mom, who I love very dearly and I'm yeah. very close with. Sure. But my mom is a true pacifist. God bless. She, Mahatma Gandhi style pacifist. Cool. Does not believe in this. But what I would say at our our family discourse, our family debates, which we're still very loving is that I, like you, I believe that force is sometimes required to do good in the world. And I could cite you a bunch of examples of why, but you just, you just, well, we know, we know that when bad men, well, we know that whoever has a monopoly on violence, which is usually a central government, but we know that if that government is not for the people, by the people and of the people, we know what happens. Uh, and those people in power will kill you. They'll kill your kids. They'll do whatever. Look, all of us, pacifists, you want to be a pacifist, awesome. The Nazis would have shot Gandhi. And I really do respect passive resistance. I've read Thoreau uh, on civil disobedience, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But we all know that at the end of the day, if you don't have men with guns guarding those walls, uh, I mean, I'll just... Sh sh how, how, did, how would the pacifists have done against the Mongols? Oh, yeah, they killed everybody anyway. It doesn't matter. So... 
uh, I wonder, would ISIS be, uh, I guess you could convert to Islam, but you better do what they say. Look, I mean, the bottom line is it's not realistic. And you're right. There is a time and a place for, for violence. There yeah. just is. When you see my back ripple and I pull myself up like a chimp, <laughs> like a chimp 30 like times chimp. Bang, while talking to you, why wouldn't I give that to you as it's inspiration? It's a gift. It's a gift, really. It's a gift. Shit.